Hi, I'm Ms. Deblois, and I'm a teacher at Lewiston Middle School. And I'm here today to interview Corporal John McDonald from the Maine Warden Service. Thank you for coming by today. Yes, yeah, my pleasure. I look forward to it. Thank you, Michelle. So what we're really curious about is about your job and how you act like a detective for your investigation. Sure. So the first question is, how do you actually start an investigation? Well, I would say most of the time an investigation comes to us in the form of something with it we have to react to. So because we don't have eyeballs all over the world and more in specifically the state of Maine, we count on other people to give us information that basically tells us what took place. So an investigation begins um, by interviewing witnesses typically uh, or, or sus suspects that might be involved in a particular incident. So what is the inquiry process that actually drives this investigation? Do you have certain steps that you have to follow? No, there's really no specific steps, but um, you know, it depends on what the investigation involves. And um, sometimes it's, you know, only visible by one person in a particular incident. So it may be may involve talking with them. Um, maybe they saw someone else that witnessed something and then it evolves and we speak to someone else. Um, sometimes it involves the person that we're targeting, you know, is the investigation, maybe the person that was, um, that we suspect may have committed a particular violation. So, you know, depending on what we learn from our interviews with people, suspects, witnesses, or whatever, it can evolve and take us down different paths, which can be very interesting. And it can go in a direction that, um, quite frankly, looking at it at the beginning, we didn't even anticipate. So um, that's what's always so interesting with investigations and, um, you know, talking to people primarily is what gets us in the area that we need to go with, with an investigation. So what other sources of information do you use besides say witnesses? Well, there's a whole host of things nowadays with technology. Sometimes it's images caught on surveillance cameras. Sometimes it's images caught on game cameras. It's, um, you know, depending on the circumstances, it could be, um, you know, an ex-wife or an ex-husband turning someone in. You know, it just, it, it always is surprising who can come forward sometimes in an investigation uh, and provide us with information. But um, you always have to take it um, as it is. You know, you can't jump to conclusions. You can't take it for absolute fact. And you just have to basically put the pieces of a puzzle together and try to best resurrect what it is that took place that brings you to investigate this incident. So. Um, it, it always takes different turns, and um, but always interesting for sure. So, how do you actually know if your source is credible or not, <clears throat> and how do you account for bias mm. in your sources? Well, you don't always know that people are credible. Uh, you may have some history with some people that would lend itself to thinking that, okay, based on what they've told me before, it was accurate. And that's probably a little bit better for your investigation if you can document that, that this person is a credible witness. Um, but you, as I said before, you always can't take it for absolute fact. So it's basically just the gathering of evidence, the gathering of, you know, hard evidence, which could be, you know, guns or ammunition or, you know, a vehicle used in a particular crime. And then there's the evidentiary aspect of just witness observations. And you just, you can never all take every, any bit of it really for an absolute fact, but our job as police officers and game wardens really are to gather the facts of a particular incident and work with the district attorney's office to make a determination of, okay, does this person get charged or is there a warning or what is gonna take place? 
Um, and biases come into play too, because oftentimes when you, when you investigate, no matter what it is, you're gonna talk to witnesses that are either related to or friends with maybe the person that you're you know, looking at. So I think naturally any one of us can assume that their statement to us, if it's regarding a loved one, might be tailored somewhat to help them out, right? I mean, most people aren't gonna throw their friends or family under the bus. Not all the time, it actually happens sometimes, but uh, uh, depends on the incident. So, you know, there are biases within, you know, some evidence that we get, some testimony, some witness statements, but, um, you know, we just have to do our best to pull it all together and see what, what is reasonable um, and, you know, work with the district attorney's office and to make a determination on whether someone may or may not get charged. Now, how do you, do you, have you received a lot of training as far as your own personal bias? Like, how do you not, you know, bring your own feelings to an investigation? Yeah, we, we, see, we receive a lot of training here in Maine. Probably, I would say Maine police officers, um, I don't know this for a fact, but I, I've heard comparisons before that we, in comparison to a lot of states, we receive as much training as anybody, some, in many cases more. Um, some of it involving just what you spoke of, you know, how to assess your own personal biases and how they fit into your enforcement. And um, in addition to the police academy that all full-time law enforcement, enforcement officers go through in Maine, game wardens go to an additional school school for 12 to 14 weeks. And um, so within that, yeah, we understand and process and apply the fact that, okay, maybe we've seen this a hundred times before, or maybe we've seen this person guilty a few times before. We need to be sure that we are applying what is factual regarding what's in front of us right now and not giving them any benefit of the doubt, you know, because of things or weighing a little bit more towards an enforcement effort just because we know that they've done this or some, something similar before. It's, it's trying to be sure that each and every time we do an investigation that we apply the most fair method possible. Um, you know, really giving the benefit of the doubt, but more importantly, paying attention to the facts in front of us that are leading us to our conclusions based on this particular incident. So it's something that's very, very important um, to our agency and I think police officers in Maine in general to be sure that if we're to prosecute somebody that we know in our gut based on the facts that we're, we're doing the right thing in this particular instance. The last thing that I want to do and our agency wants to do is to um, unfairly or improperly, you know, accuse someone of something that they didn't do. And uh, so we, we work hard in the state of Maine to make sure that that happens. 